Pop! OS has been one of the more consistently recommended Just Works beginner Linux distros. In fact, if you were to go to your search engine right now and look up what is the best Linux distro for beginners, chances are Pop! OS is going to be recommended. And this is despite this distro only being in existence for a few years. Now, it's kind of understandable why this distro was created by the System76 team who have some really nice looking laptops, they've got a great design, great specs, and best of all, they come with Linux pre-installed on them. So you can use Linux without having to be some geek that downloads an ISO and then you know, flashes it to a flash drive and installs it. I mean, who even installs OSs these days anyway? Now, originally, these System76 laptops shipped with Ubuntu on them, and I think you guys know how I feel about Ubuntu. If the Unix philosophy was a religion, Ubuntu would be one of the biggest infidels out there. And I think it was around the time that Ubuntu changed back to using GNOME as their desktop environment that Pop! OS was created. So I'm expecting this to at least feel very different than Ubuntu. Now, I've never actually used Pop! OS before, uh, so I figured that I would install it in VirtualBox, give it a spin, and you know, just see what I think about it. And if you guys wanna follow along, go ahead and head over to pop.system76.com and download the ISO for yourself. Now, the first thing that I really like about this is the site that you download it from. Uh, this is something that I think a lot of Linux distros overlook, but it's important to have a nice website that's very easy to navigate. It doesn't matter how easy your distro is to use if people can't figure out how to download and install it in the first place. So right here on the main page, you have a very easy to find download button. Um, and then if you click on it, you're given two options. So there's this um, regular download right here. And then there is one that has NVIDIA drivers pre-installed. Because if you've ever tried using Linux on a computer that has an NVIDIA graphics card, you know that that driver is an absolute bastard to try and install. It's like there's trigonometry, calculus, and then successfully installing NVIDIA graphics drivers. Uh, but Pop! OS, they take care of that for you. Uh, and they even fingerprint your device when you go to their website to you know see if you have an NVIDIA graphics card and give you this option. Like I was testing this in another browser where I had fingerprinting disabled and it didn't recommend it. Uh, uh, so they even decided to use fingerprinting in a good way for once. I wish most websites would do this. They also go above and beyond by providing some helpful tips for uh, how to install Pop! OS. So, you know, they tell you if you have the NVIDIA graphics, download that one. And then they also tell you disable secure boot in your BIOS to install Pop! OS. And then down here, you have a link to learn how to create installation media if you don't know how to. So let's click on that and they tell you all about installing Pop! OS, and then you've got this link here, make a bootable drive. Uh, if we click into that, you've got basically a whole page with screenshots and everything that you would need to create a bootable USB. So if you're completely clueless about that, if you didn't know that USBs even could be bootable, read over this page and then you'll probably figure out how to do that. So that's really handy to getting more noobs using Linux. Anyway, I already have this ISO downloaded uh, to my computer and I already went ahead and created a VM here in VirtualBox. Uh, nothing too crazy, just four gigs of RAM, two CPUs, you know, gonna see how it would function on basically a lower end computer. Uh, so let's go ahead and start that up. Uh, oh, by the way, I just used the regular ISO. I didn't use the NVIDIA graphics one because I'm not gonna be doing like GPU pass through or anything like that. Uh, even then, not sure if you would want the uh, NVIDIA one. Maybe I'll test this on hardware one day if it ends up being really nice. I kind of like this font that they have during this initial startup screen. I like it better than the default that other distros use. All right, so here we go. Um, not sure why this didn't automatically go to a full screen, but sometimes they do that. You know, during the installation, there'll be a smaller screen. Um, so let's see, we'll choose English and yeah, United States English. That's the best kind. All right, looks like 
Might have... Okay, it didn't freeze. Okay, for some reason I was getting a whole bunch of lag, uh, but I just went ahead and paused the video, restarted the VM, so... Let's try this again. We're gonna choose US English, select. Okay, now things seem to be going a little bit better. All right, see so yeah, how we have that and test the input. Everything looks good. So we'll select that. Uh, yeah, we'll do default. That's fine. So then you have the option of doing a clean install or a custom. I'm just gonna do a clean install because this is, again, this is a, a beginner distro and this is probably what a beginner would do. All right, so we'll go ahead and do that. Um, yeah, this is the hard disk. This is a really clean looking setup prompt as well. Like it just, it just looks good, you know? Um, okay, so, oh, is it? Oh, okay, so it's prompting you to encrypt. All right, so by default, it's gonna try and lead you in the direction of en encryption. I'm not going to encrypt though. I'm just gonna take a look at it. That's good though, that they sort of push users in the direction of encryption. Cause I know on a lot of other distros, it's usually just like a box that you have to check. Like, yeah, I wanna use encryption um, and it's not a default option, here it is. All right, so I'll pause the video while this installs. All right, so this is done. Took maybe four minutes to install on a solid state drive. And I'm pretty sure that I made the disk the primary boot option, so it should just take us right into the OS now. All right, we got a nice gray screen, now a black screen. And here we go, the Pop OS desktop. All right, so we got our welcome message. Pretty common with the Just Works distros, beginner distros. So let's see, typing. Um, I mean, okay, I already chose a keyboard, so that's fine. Uh, privacy, so location services, yeah, we'll just leave that on. Time zone, yeah, New York, that's good. And then you have the option of collecting your or connecting your online accounts. I don't have any of these. Um, and about you, we'll say that I'm Kenny. And we'll choose a password. All right. And we're all done. Let's start using Pop OS. Okay, looks like our desktop's taken a little while to load, but I think this is GNOME, right? This looks an awful lot like GNOME. Maybe this is it. Isn't there supposed to be a side panel over here? Okay, so you gotta click activities. Okay, so it's like, it's a little different than uh, Ubuntu because usually you have this all like over here by default. All right, so let's, um, why don't we just go through our applications first. All right, so we've got a calculator. Um, we got Firefox as our web browser. That's pretty standard on Linux. Let's see what version we've got installed here. Let's see if it's up to date. I think 85 is the latest. Uh, yeah, so there we go. Um, yeah, we'll close out of that. Go back through these. Uh, all right, we got the Office Suite, so all the LibreOffice programs. Um, Pop Shop, I'm guessing that this is like an app store. Yeah, it is. Oh, and this is a really nice looking app store too. It also looks like they do a dark theme by default. So this, this is another really, really nice thing uh, that I like, the dark theme. Uh, so yeah, we got a bunch of different options here. We go into video. Oh, <laughs> Flash Player, right here at the top. Oh man, F for Flash Player. So many good times playing Flash games during my youth. Uh, we got a text editor here. I'm guessing this is G-Edit. Um, about, yep, G-Edit, good old G-Edit. One of my favorite GUI text editors. Um, of course, Vim is my favorite command line one. In fact, let's see, do we have Vim installed? Oh, how could you? Do you at least have VI installed? All right, okay. 
So Vim is on here. They just, uh, you know, you can't start it with Vim. You have to start it with VI. All right, that's that's fine. Um, let's see. Uh, they don't have HTOP installed. That's fine though. Almost nobody has HTOP installed by default. And yeah, I know you can use top, but HTOP looks nicer. So let's uh, let's fingerprint this guy and see what we're using. So we're using about one gig uh, idling. That's actually not too bad considering that you know GNOME is installed on here. Usually GNOME is about a 1.2 or a 1.5, I think. When was the last time I used GNOME? I believe it was in my Fedora uh, Linux review. And I'm pretty sure it was about 1.2 or 1.5. So this is nice and light, not, not too much bloat. Uh, let's see, what other applications do we have? Oh yeah, so there actually is a system monitor here. So you don't have to install HTOP, you know, you can use a, a lesser system monitor like this one here. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Some type of a weather app. Oh no, it's saying that I'm in Cambridge. People are gonna find me. Okay, yeah, that's that's pretty cool, I guess. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Let's go into our settings. Let's see how easy this is to navigate. So I mean, so far, it's like, if you're new to Linux, this would probably be pretty easy to deal with. If you're switching from Windows to Linux, it might be a little harder. You know, that's why for those people, I usually recommend Linux Mint because it sort of feels like you're using Windows. You know, you got the start menu down there in the lower left-hand corner instead of this activities menu up here. Uh, but if you're going from like Mac OS to Linux, this would probably be pretty easy. Um, so yeah, just your standard like GNOME settings. So you've got your Bluetooth, you've got the appearance. Uh, let's see what kind of backgrounds we have here. Oh, this looks nice. Oh, I like this one. This is a pretty comfy looking desktop. Uh, what else? Okay, we have like some Pop OS, uh, you know, Pop OS backgrounds. Okay, that looks pretty cool too. Um, oh, I think I might use this one. Yeah, I like the purple. Purple looks really good. Um, oh, I should have stayed in the settings manager. I'm gonna go through some other settings. Uh, so notification, so you can get notifications from all of these different apps, or you can do do not disturb. You can also enable lock screen notifications. Um, and then this is just going through all the different applications. Let's see, color. Oh, this is, uh, wait, up to date. Okay, not actually 100% sure what this is about. Oh, okay, so color management, just making sure that your colors are actually correct. Yeah, I'm in a VM, <laughs> so uh, that's not gonna be as important. And of course you can change language. There's the accessibilities tab and users. And I think we can create new users from here as well, instead of using the terminal, because obviously if you're new to Linux, you probably won't be using the terminal that much. Let's see, are there any other apps? Any other apps that really stand out? There's not a whole lot on here. Uh, which is good, you know, it's not bloated down, it's not bogged down by a whole lot. Um, I'm guessing this is just a standard GNOME file manager. Uh, yeah, looks like it. Okay, these are some interesting looking icons as well. Yeah, these look pretty nice. They're not as boring as Fedora's. Because I think Fedora is just like regular default GNOME. Not that much fun. Um, let's see, what else is there to look at? I feel like we've already looked at everything on here. Uh, oh, which kernel are we using? Let's see how new our kernel is. 5.8, okay. So relatively new Linux kernel is on here. Oh, so I guess there's a couple of other GNOME things that I can show you guys in here. Um, so this button right here, it gives you the option of tiling your windows. 
Uh, and I should probably just open a couple applications to sort of show you how that works. So let's get, um, uh, cancel that. Let's get um, Firefox going and uh, yeah, close that. And let's get our files going. All right, so currently we're in floating windows, which just means you, know, you can click on them and they float around. But if we enable tiling, so it's gonna work kind of like a window manager, right? You're gonna have uh, just this window automatically taking up half the screen and then this one uh, taking up the other half. So this is pretty great. And you can add more to the tiles. So like if you open a uh, terminal, it's gonna just show down there. And let's see, I think if I open another one, it'll like kind of checkerboard, right? Oh, no, so it's doing it in like, a, what is it, Fibonacci way, right? Where it just, kind of makes it smaller and smaller. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. There's also a tab stack feature where you can have multiple applications within one window and just tab between them. Uh, so let me show you how that works. Um, so you wanna have the tiling enabled and you just click on uh, whichever application you wanna start doing the tab stacks in and press super S so this is going to make this little bar uh, kind of come up in the top and then you just drag another application onto it. Let me try that again. I think it was a little bit too high. Um, maybe right around here. Okay, there we go. So now you can see that I've got these different tabs. So like I'm here in my terminal and then over here I'm in a file manager and I should be able to do this again with a web browser. And I can, so there you go. This tab is my web browser, this tab is my file manager, and this is going to be uh, my terminal. So this is gonna be really handy if, for example, you've only got one monitor, right? You can have all of your applications here, uh, and they can all take up a large little bit of uh, screen real estate. Now, this isn't always perfect, okay? So like, let me show you an example. Um, where you might not want to do something like this. Let's open up the calculator. Okay, so our calculator looks a little bit ridiculous because it's maximized and it just doesn't look good, right? Like this, this doesn't look good. So we can add an exception to it with this floating window exceptions. Um, and then we need to select our application. So we want it to be the calculator. And then you have the option of doing the current window only, which is just gonna do this instance of the app. So like if you open up another calculator, it's gonna go back to doing the same thing. Or you can say this app's windows, just all of them. And now you'll see that this is floating. Okay, so it's an exception to the tiling rule. And then I've got the rest of my apps here tiled. Uh, so really, really handy. Lastly, there's a whole lot of handy keyboard shortcuts. Uh, so if we go up here, we can see them and view all. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of different ones here. Like you can uh, launch and switch applications with the super forward slash combination. Uh, so yeah, switch between the applications that way. This would actually be pretty handy um, to pull up things like the calculator when it gets hidden behind this tiling window mess. Uh, so that's pretty much it for my review on Pop! OS. As far as what I think about it, I think that this is a really great beginner distro, uh, especially if you're coming from Mac OS. If you're coming from Windows, you might be a little bit confused just by the layout of things. You know, GNOME is very different than uh, whatever window manager <laughs> Windows uses. Um, but yeah, I definitely see why. This is one of the most recommended Linux distros. I would certainly recommend it to any beginners. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have a great day.